Ever wonder how to get the best settings on your Sony camera? In this video, I'm gonna share the best settings for any Sony user. Check it out. Three, two, one. Hey guys, Blaze here with Moves Media and thanks for tuning into my channel. I'm reporting from my home studio. We're really sad to have moved out of our office a few weeks ago during this isolation and quarantine period. So shooting here, converted my living room into this studio that you're seeing today and probably for the next several videos to come depending on how long this goes for. Really hope that you guys are staying safe out there and hopefully this video can help you improve your video skills during this crisis and scary period in our lives. So I get asked all the time on what's the best settings for a Sony camera? The main one being picture profile. Now we have a full video on our favorite picture profile, which I'll link in the video description below. So make sure to check that out if you haven't seen that already. Um, but what we can conclude in that video is that Cine 4 is our preferred picture profile. But I wanted to dive in in this video into a little more detail on how we set up our camera in that Cine 4 picture profile. So what is a picture profile? When I started shooting, I had no idea that the picture profiles even existed, and I would just hit that record button and get whatever that came out of the camera. But in a lot of DSLR cameras um, and cinema cameras, you can actually select the amount of color, saturation, and contrast that you want to shoot with. And what this means is that when you're in the post-production process, you can add all the contrast or colors back in, but by shooting in a flatter picture profile or what it looks like on, when you're shooting on the camera, you get more information into the camera like dynamic range. So it looks a little bit worse when you're shooting, but it gives you more flexibility later when you're in the editing process. So Cine 4 is basically an in-between. It's not a super flat picture profile like an S-Log or a Log profile, but it's not that highly saturated view either, which comes standard when you press that record button in your camera. So we like to use Cine 4. It gives us some more added dynamic range, but like I said, I did will link to that detailed video about Cine 4 and why we use it in the video description below. So I'm gonna dive into the camera and show you how we set our camera up. Uh, the menu that you're gonna be seeing is from the Sony a7S II. Different Sony cameras have slightly different menu systems, but typically have the same functionality. So uh, you'll, I'm sure you'll be able to navigate it on your camera if you don't have the exact same camera that we're using. So the first thing you're gonna do is open up your camera and go into the menu and look for the picture profile setting, which is in well, one of the first menu screens um, that you're gonna click on. And then we have our profile set on PP4, I believe. So we're gonna open up uh, PP4 and find the details. And basically what we're gonna see here is black level, gamma, uh, black gamma, knee, color mode, and saturation. So the first major setting you wanna click on is the gamma, and you'll see there's a bunch of different options here, different cine modes, uh, S-logs, uh, which is really, really popular and what we used to shoot on before we switched uh, to preferring cine 4. Uh, so we're gonna select cine 4 here, and then we're gonna go out of that and go down to color mode, which is probably the second most important feature here. And we have ours set to S gamut three cine. Going into some more advanced settings, you can see that we have the black level set to zero. The black gamma is set to wide and plus four. This will just help retain some more of the information in the dark areas of the image. So knee in our menu is set to auto. Uh, we have saturation set to zero, color phase set to zero, and then we also have color depth, and this is actually another important one. So for our color depth, I'll put a screenshot on the screen right now on what we set it to. Sony cameras are known for having a bit of a magenta look. So by applying the settings that we use in our color depth, we're gonna um, offset this and make it look a little more natural, a little less magenta, and we prefer that look to what comes stock with the, the Sony settings. The last setting in this menu is detail, and detail we just leave at zero. A lot of people like to reduce this because they can add the details back in post, but personally I don't really have an issue with this and it just means less work for me when I'm editing the videos. Now, moving on to when you actually start shooting, you wanna make sure that you lock in your white balance before you hit that record button. Um, a lot of people just have their white balance on auto, but the scene can change while you're shooting and then all your footage is gonna look a bit different. It's gonna be hard to match. Um, so I always like to lock it in. Typically, I'll set it at a specific temperature rating or daylight if I'm just shooting outside. So make sure to lock that in because that is something that is more difficult to fix in post later if you don't get it right in the camera. The other big thing with Sony cameras and something that I've been super frustrated with is the exposure level and the shadows. I find that there's a ton of noise 
noise and just loss of information in the dark area, especially on high contrast scenes. So we always overexpose by at least one stop. That's gonna bring the highlights and the shadows up a bit, get rid of some of that noise. Um, and typically in post, you can just bring it down if it's too hot, but you do wanna be careful that you're not going overboard and clipping in the highlights area because if something is overblown or white, that white color in your in your camera, then you can't get that information back and you're gonna lose those details. So in the editing process, Cine 4 looks pretty good right out of the gate. Um, we always do some adjustments typically to our basic Lumetri scopes in Premiere where we'll boost the vibrance, uh, add some contrast, and probably bring, bring the exposure down um, because we did purposely overexpose it overexpose it slightly uh, in camera. Um, and then we'll also add some uh, vibrance, maybe a little saturation, and there you have it. You basically have some great professional footage ready to go. Obviously, you can be super creative and very detailed in the whole color scopes. You can adjust colors, um, add different LUTs or presets, uh, get all super detailed in your shadows, your highlights, your uh, go into your curves and make those adjustments as well, but we won't get too detailed for the purposes of this video. This is just a quick and easy format that you can use. You can make some basic tweaks and then you have some great footage that's just gonna look good for wherever you wanna post it. And that's it guys. Thank you to those who did reach out and ask us for our detailed settings in our Sony cameras. Hope you found this video useful. If you did like this video, please smash that like button. Consider subscribing to our channel and I'm hoping to get a lot more content out now that I'm basically stuck here in uh, self-isolation. Um, hope you guys are taking care of yourselves. Uh, let me know what you guys are doing during this crisis. Uh, as a filmmaker, I know there's a lot of awesome content actually being made and uh, I'm hoping to jump on that bandwagon and make some fun stuff as well as some useful stuff for you guys. Um, but feel free Free to shoot some comments in that com comment section below. Thanks again for watching, guys, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Peace.